Hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to my sister's garden where I am doing my voiceover for this video. I knew I had these flowers in my computer ready to voiceover and thought I would do that in the garden with the birds as a background. There might also be some trucks in the background too. I'm going to show you some easy blending with analogous colors. I'm going to do it with Copic markers, but you can also use any medium. So if you're a pencil colorer or other kind of markers or paints or anything, analogous colors simply tend to blend easier. And that's because they're next to each other on the color wheel. You can download a color wheel and print it out to put in your bag, or you can make one of these, and I'll tell you a little bit more about mine. It has things like complementary colors, etc. These three little hearts are what we're going to pay attention to in this particular video. Because the three hearts are analogous colors. So you can spin this around and find out what colors are next to each other on this color wheel. And here I'm going to pick a yellow, a yellow orange and an orange color although my marker that I choose is actually going to be a little more of a red because the Copic markers don't really have orange as a color so I went a little bit more intense but I picked a red that was more of a tomato red and a yellowish red rather than a cherry red that's more purpley and it blended very very well the yellow orange color goes in between the yellow and the red and worked really great for blending I can spin this around and then go find another color combination, a green, a yellow green, and a yellow for all of my leaves. And I'll apologize now if there's one leaf that I miss. I will go pick it up later, but I know some of you stress out if I miss a spot, so I'll let you know now that that happens. But these colors go together really well, and depending on how experienced you are, if you're newer to coloring, you might want to pick shades of each of these colors that are around the same. Like if you pick a mid-tone yellow-green, go with a mid-green and a mid-yellow. Because if you go with a really dark green and a light yellow-green, you're going to have some stress about trying to get those two to blend a little bit more than if they were both in the same kind of range. So that's just a little tip for those who are newer. But generally the colors that are next to each other in almost all the shades, you can get them to blend. So here I decided to pick something that I don't do very often, I don't see hardly anybody do very often, which is take one of the primaries, the blue, and look at the blue-violet on one side and the blue-green on the other side. And instead of just trying to focus on only having the, the primary color on one end or the other of the triad. And here what I've done, I wanted to show you what happens when you pick a color that's dark to go with some colors that are light. So the blue and the blue-green are a little darker, but that blue-violet is a lighter color and there's a harsh line there with the, the blue. All you have to do is go in there with your blue-violet again and blend that because the lighter color will blend a little bit easier over top of all of it. So if you have trouble with any of these, you can go over them generally, with whatever your light color is. I'm also switching up the order throughout this video on which one of these, this triad of colors goes next to which. So sometimes you can you can mix them up in different orders and they still work because they're really close to each other in that little triad. So these are the next ones I'm going to use. I wanted something warm but something with a real punch to it because so far I have the, the really intense warm yellows and yellow reds and then those really soft purples and blues so I wanted something with some real punch to it. So. I went with a red, a red-violet, and a violet. Now here, my red-violet color is the lightest out of the three. So I do have to do a little, little blending to make that work. But you can switch them up in all different orders and try to see which ones work best. Try it on scratch paper before you try it on your stamped image. And that sometimes will make you a little more successful. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, this is the Doodle Buds set from W Plus 9. It's one of their recent releases and it's just so cute. I stamped all of these together onto the card, so it's not a giant stamp that will give you this entire scene, but I masked out flowers and stamped them so that they would layer over top of each other like this. And I did it with my Misty, so I made a couple of them so I could color it in different mediums and see how that would work. All right, so now I'm finishing off uh, more details on the image, including all of these little teeny tiny pieces underneath each of the flowers. I don't know what the flowers actually are and whether these are supposed to be little green leaves at the base of each one of them, but I assumed that. If you want to create 
a little green like that and use the same colors. I'm keeping it with the same colors the other leaves are, but if you want those leaves perhaps to be dark, then don't use the yellow. Just use a two color blend and use just the green and the yellow green. Or if you want them light, then skip the green. And then you can get a little different greens across the whole thing while still pulling colors from the rest of the image across it. Because when you do that, you tend to get a more unified image. You don't need a ton of everything, but just little little highlights of things across the image. Just makes it feel like it all goes together and is very, very intentional. And here I'm using the blues and blue-greens and stuff in different combinations, trying to see which ones blend. It's just playing around with it. I'm not worried in any of this about shading, light and dark, and where the light source is coming from or anything. I'm just using bright colors and enjoying the coloring. So this is hopefully no stress coloring and not worrying about all of those, those highlight and shadow details and just layering colors. I liked on this particular one how the red color went over top of the purples and the pinks and created a really intense color. So I just did more of that as I, I got to that stage of coloring the flower. And a lot of times I change my mind midstream. I'm like, you know, I didn't like how such and such color layered over something, so I change it and layer a different color over top. Now what's left is the centers of the color of the flowers. So I'm gonna use the same colors again, just in some two color blends to bring more of those pops of color throughout the image and using different ones than are on those flowers already so that they have a real strong pop. Now there's little edges on these flowers, little, little lines where the doodling happens around the edges. And there's a lot of different things you can do with that. You could highlight those with different colors like I'm doing. You could highlight them with black to make them really strong or if you stamp this and colored a background on it, you could highlight them with white and leave those parts white. You could do all different kinds of things. What I decided to do with my entire scene was just leave it plain and, and not do any crazy background coloring, but I added glossy accents to all the flowers and let it dry a good long time. And I think it came out just beautiful and has a lot of shimmer and shine to it along with some beautiful coloring. So. Here are a couple other videos if you're interested in going to see more of my work. And otherwise, you can click in the upper right hand corner, either on mobile or on a desktop computer, to go to my blog and get more information. There's always a little more detail on my blog than there is in a video because there's always stuff I forget to say. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.